All right, so today we are going to discuss what is online processing. We have been talking about different types of processing techniques that are used to process the data. Uh, there are three main types of processing techniques that are usually used to process the data. Batch processing, online processing and real-time processing. Batch processing is something that we have already discussed in detail in class with examples. So today we are going to focus on what is online processing. Okay, so online processing is, is different from the way batch processing takes place. Remember with batch processing, the processing has to wait for all the relevant data to be first collected and then processed all in one go. But when it comes to online processing, there is a requirement for processing the data as soon as a transaction happens. Whatever is needed to be updated or whatever processing is needed to be carried out on the data has to be done right then and there and all the information updated because if that information or whatever it is, whatever data it is that you are processing is not processed or updated in, in real time, you know, as the transaction happens, it can have an effect or impact on the very next transaction, all right? So this is what the importance of online processing is. There are a few more terms that are used to describe what is online processing. One of them is that it is also called, let me write it down, it is also called transaction processing. Actually, there are quite a few terms, transaction processing. Another term that is used to describe online processing is interactive processing. And yet another term that is used to describe the same type of processing is demand processing. It is also called demand processing. Now, if you look at these terms, all these more or less mean the same thing. Interactive would mean that, you know, something that happens or that has to be dealt with as soon as it happens. Demand processing, as soon as the need or the demand of a certain type of processing of data arises, the data gets processed right then and there without waiting for any time. There is no concept of data being collected first together and then processed at a later date as in the case of batch processing here as soon as a transaction happens uh, whatever data that needs to be you know whatever data that is involved in it has to be processed right then then and there and all the information updated in real time okay if we have a look at the definition i would refer to my notes for this now if you look at it it says an online processing system is a type of processing system that deals with data in transactions. So, deals with data in transactions. Transactions, we did talk about what is meant by a transaction. It is any, any activity, any business activity, I would say, that takes place, okay, that results in uh, you know, any, any small amount of data to be processed and, you know, based on that certain information getting updated. A certain amount of data is input as a transaction. This amount of data is usually small. So usually it is, you know, one set of data that is uh, processed at a certain point in time. So usually the amount of data which is used here is small, only related to the activity which is taking place. Once the data for the transaction is collected, it is processed and next transactions, transaction can occur. Transaction processing is also known as interactive processing. So the term that I, you know, just spoke about a while ago, you know, you can, uh, you can see that the term has been used to describe online processing. Okay. For some applications, the master file needs to be kept up to date all the time. 
For example, in a travel agency, whenever a seat is booked on a flight, the number of seats that remain available on the flight must be reduced by one immediately. This is one example of, of transaction processing or of online processing. With online booking systems, as soon as a seat is booked on a flight, its status on the system must change from being available to, to reserved. So that anyone who wishes to book a seat on the same flight, you know, the very next moment or maybe the very next minute, has the current status shown to him in updated form, which means that all the seats that would have, would have been reserved till that point should be shown as, as reserved and should not be shown as, you know, seats that are still available to be booked. If this information was not updated in the system, as this transaction related to booking the seat took place, it would create confusions. Are you getting this? If the system does not update this information that, okay, well, uh, as a result of a particular transaction, a seat or certain seats have been booked and they are no longer available to be booked, the very next person who may, you know, try to book a seat would be shown all those seats that have already been booked as seats that are not available to be booked. And whatever the remaining seats are, only those are the options available for, for him to, you know, book a seat. Now, how is this possible? This was only possible because as soon as, as a result of a booking, a seat or some seats got booked, their status in real time, right at that very moment, changed from being available to now, you know, reserved. So that they are no longer available to the next person, the very next minute, who might be trying to book a seat on the same flight. Now tell me one thing, had this information not been updated in real time, right at the time that this booking, you know, transaction related to booking the seat took place, what kind of a problem would that have resulted in? Had this not been reserved? Yes. Overbooking and very good. And actually the, the actual term that you could use for it would be double booking. You know, double booking of the same seat, maybe triple booking of the same seat. And that would create a chaos or confusion because of the fact that you were not updating the required information or the necessary information as and when it was needed. So this is just a very simple example of how transaction process processing takes place and how whatever small data that needs to be updated as a result of that transaction needs to be updated right at that time as the transaction takes place. And if it is not, it will create confusions or it will it would have repercussions or or it would have impact on you know the very next transactions that are going to happen you know later on is it making sense yeah okay let's have a look at a few more examples i think that would uh, make things a little more clear to you Okay, now we do know that transaction processing would be needed or online processing will be needed when data has to be uh, processed or processing has to take place immediately. Such as supermarket checkouts, these are a few more examples. Interrogating an, a database for an employee's details. interrogating a database for an employee's details. Okay, uh, what is meant by interrogating a database for an employee details? Means searching for, searching for the record or records of a particular employee, okay, as and when it is needed. If I need to search for the information or the data of a particular employee who is working in my company, uh, I would have to have access to it immediately without any delay. So as soon as I put in that criteria that I want to search for, this is a particular employee that I want to search the record of, the database should respond immediately and show me the result of that employee so that I can use it. 
Wouldn't it be an, an example of interactive processing? As an, an, a need arose for searching for any particular data item, and I tried to look for it on my system, the processing happened right then and there, and the information was shown. All right? OK. Another example, which is, which is a very popular example of uh, online processing is in the shape of EFT or electronic funds transfer. Automatic stock control, okay, and quite a few other examples. Does anybody know what is uh, EFT? Generally, what is electronic funds transfer? Yeah, you, yeah, the question is, the question is, what is, what is electronic funds transfer? What is meant by electronic funds transfer? Whenever, whenever money or funds are transferred from one account to the other account online, okay, using a computer network, communication between any two computers where funds are transferred maybe from one bank account to another bank account without the need for involvement of people or paperwork. That would be an example of electronic funds transfer. You do know about online payments, yeah? Isn't online payment an example of electronic funds transfer? When you, when you make a payment maybe for something online, using, uh, using your credit card, for example, funds related to whatever it is that you have purchased are transferred from your account to the account of the business okay, that you have purchased the product from. So, funds are automatically transferred from your account to the other account in the shape of the payment that you make for whatever good or goods that you have purchased from a certain business. So that is an example of electronic funds transfer. Or for that matter, if it is a case of, you know, generally, if I want, I have to make somebody's payment, okay, and uh, uh, instead of making the payment in hard cash or maybe presenting a check, I can take the other person's account details account details of, of course, the, the bank that they have the account with and the account details. And I can use my banking application to transfer a certain amount of money, whatever amount of money that I am required to pay to the other person. I can go to my online banking app and I can uh, fill in the details, the details of the account number that I need to transfer a certain amount of money, put in the money and, you know, carry out the transaction and the amount electronic electronically gets trans transferred from my account to the account of the person that I owe whatever money that I have to pay. So another example of electronic funds transfer. We can have a look at a few more examples as well of uh, electronic funds transfer. Okay. Now here are, here are some particular examples also, although I have described uh, you know, briefly, what is meant by electronic funds transfer. Okay, if, if you look at it, you know, in terms of the definition of uh, what electronic funds transfer is, one of the definition of electronic funds transfer or EFT is that it is the electronic transfer of money, electronic transfer of money from one bank account to another to another using a computer based or using computer based systems. Direct transfer of funds or money from one bank account to the other bank account using computer networks or using two computers between which the transaction can take place. All right. Um, okay. There's no involvement of the bank staff in this. It is, it is a direct form of payment being made by one person from his account to the account of another person. Examples of this include use of ATMs or automated teller machines. 
All right. A direct payment of money <coughs> to another person. This is something that I was just talking about. Direct debits. What is a direct debit? When a company debits a customer's bank account for payment for goods or services. EFTs can be transfers relating from credit or debit card transactions at a supermarket as well. When we make a payment using our credit or debit cards at supermarkets for the goods that we have purchased, these are all examples of electronic funds transfer. All right. Uh, well, we can use ATM machines these days for payment of bills. Is that right or not? Yeah. So I can pay my electricity bill using an ATM machine. All I need to do is to, you know, go to the ATM machine, put in my, you know, consumer ID or customer number because customer number or consumer ID or subscriber ID is mentioned on every bill. So as soon as I put in my subscriber's ID, I can be shown the details. Okay. And I can, I just have to fill in the details related to the amount that I have to pay and the you know, amount that I have to pay in what name to what company I can select the company and I can pay the bill. So what happens money from my account gets transferred to the account of the electricity department. In this case, maybe let's go. Okay. Which is, uh, which is the uh, local electricity authority that, uh, you know, sends us the electricity bills. So what, what happens? I am paying the amount that is uh, that is there in my account okay uh, the amount which is which which the the actual bill is okay so i am making that payment from my account to the account of the company so it is electronically being transferred from my account to the account of the company that i want to make the payment to is it making sense yes or no yes okay great okay um Direct debits, any idea anyone has what, what are direct debits? Sorry? Okay, direct debit would be, an example of direct debit would be where, you know, one of the examples is when organizations or companies pay salaries to their employees at the end of the month. So what happens is that, what happens is that when they make the payment, their accounts are debited, okay, and the amount is, the salary is credited to, credited to the employee's account. Direct debit money is taken out automatically from the company's account and it is paid to the employee in the shape of or in the form of salary. So direct debit is where an arrangement has already been made with the bank that a certain amount of money needs to be deducted uh, from the company's account and made in the and made a payment in the shape of a salary to an employee. So it would again be a case of electronic funds transfer from the company's account to to the employee's account. And of course, to every employee's account who is an employee of the company. So it's it's a process that takes place at the end of every month in uh, you know when payments are to be made or salaries are to be uh, are to be made to employees yes yes you're right yes that's true that's true wherever wherever it is a case of money being debited from uh, a certain organizations or company's account and being paid you know, to any uh, other person, okay, it, it could be an employee, it could be a subscriber or whatever, all right, or maybe it's the subscri subscriber making the payment to the company either way, you know, your account is being, even your account can be debited in case of, you know, uh, or in the shape of paying subscriptions, monthly subscriptions, maybe quarterly subscriptions, so a certain amount of money would be debited from your account and it, it would be credited in the shape of a subscription. Uh, or a payment for subscription that, that is made to a company. All right. Okay. So he has given this example of uh, wages being paid to employees. Most people receive their wages as a result of EFT. 
money from the employers bank account is transferred or electronically to the employees bank account at the end of the at the end of every month in the shape of salary being paid okay another example is paying of bills i spoke it spoke about it briefly for example you may decide that your house needs redecorating now this is this is another example of paying a bill other than you know uh, what we just discussed in the form of paying electricity bills okay say for instance you you your house needs redecorating so you ask a painter to come and paint your house when the painter has finished he or she will require a payment one of the easiest ways of doing this is to take the painter's bank account a painter ka bank account lenge bank account details and transfer the money from the account to the painter's account from your account to the painter's account so you got uh services from somebody like you know painting your house or whatever and uh, at the end of the job you need to make payment to the person uh for the services that he offered and whatever payment that you have to make again instead of make maybe making payment in the form of hard cash or some other way you just ask the person to share his account details and you can make the payment directly in his account from your account all right so you do understand that when we talk about electronic funds transfer it means that there is no requirement of paying in hard cash or there is no transaction which is taking place in the form of hard cash and what happens is that what is meant by money being electronically transferred from one account to the other account what is meant by it basically at the electronic level in the accounts on the computers when you make a payment a certain amount of money you know related to the payment would be subtracted or minused from the overall money that you have in your account and it would be added to the person or to the company that you are making the payment to are you getting what i'm saying so you know hypothetically speaking if say for instance you had uh, you know let's for the sake of simplicity you had 50000 in your account you have to make somebody's payment you have to make a payment of about what say for instance 10000 rupees now the person that you are trying to make the payment has 100000 lying in his account for example yeah so this is this is what a this is b customer a, uh, you know uh, entity a entity b let's let's uh, put it this way so a person a has to make a payment of a person b you have 50000 lying in your account customer b has 100000 lying in his account you have to make a payment of 10000 when you do it through eft electronic funds transfer 10000 would be subtracted or minused or deducted from your account and now your account would show a status where you are left with how much 40000 you you are left with about 40000 now so as soon as you make this transaction okay the status of balance in your account changes from 50 to 40000 and here when 10000 is received by the person b his account now shows what 110000 updated this is how it all happens so now my you know the person who whom you have made the payment his account status show that right now in his account he has 110000 rupees because 10 a, a payment of 10000 has just been received and added to the overall balance that he has in his account and from the person who is paying the amount as uh, that particular amount is deducted and now your account shows the status that you are left with 40000 rupees in your account it is the same thing that happens when you when you use the atm machine for withdrawing cash when you withdraw cash what happens whatever amount of cash that you have withdrawn the balance in your account reflects the total amount now you know whatever total amount that is shown uh after whatever transaction that you have carried out whatever money that you have taken out from the account 
and whatever balance is left that is shown in your account once the transaction is completed. Okay. So we have looked at quite a few examples of uh, electronic funds transfer. What is the process that takes place when payment is made from one account to the other account using EFT? These steps are important. These are very simple steps, but they would help in describing the process properly, you know, in case you, you get a question in the exam, where you have to describe the process of what actually happens when uh, using EFT, a payment is made from one account to the other account. So if you look at the steps, the first thing is select transfer money, you know, from your, your application, you select that, you know, the operation that you want to carry out is transferring the money. Number two, select the amount, sorry, select the account you wish to transfer money from, all right. Select new payee, payee is the person that you owe the money or you have to pay the money to, is the payee. Number four, type in sort code, account number and payee name. So basically in other words, the account details or the account number, I would say the account details of the person because the account in which you are making the payment uh, would have an account title and uh, a certain account number and stuff, you know, where you are making the payment. Type in the amount to transfer. How much money do you have to transfer to the payee's account? Computer checks available balance. Remember, you can only make a certain payment if you have the required balance in your account. I cannot make a payment if I do not have the required amount, you know, that I have to pay in my account. So my account would be checked that do I have sufficient funds available to make this payment or not. So computer checks available balance. If you have sufficient funds, the transaction is authorized. Your bank's computer contacts payees bank's computer which searches for the payees record. So whatever account details that you put in for a certain amount of money to be transferred to a particular account, that account also needs to be verified that an account exists with this name and the rest of the detail, maybe the account number. Amount is subtracted from your account balance amount is added to the payee's account balance. This is what the simple procedure is. All right. Is it making sense? Okay, very good. One or two more examples. Yes. Usually, usually, uh, these types of transactions do involve uh, very little service charges of, uh, you know, availing these facilities. Because it's not that, although, although such services uh, are, are very convenient to make use of, but there are some minimal amount of hidden charges associated with using the service. Okay, because you see, bank is also providing you the service at a cost. So they also have from time to time, they, you know, they need their maintenance and upgrading and whatnot. So for that, they do need some sort of a backup. So in that, in that sense, they may, uh, you know, or this, th these types of transaction may involve some minimal amount of service charges that you may have to pay. All right. But that's, that's really negligible. Doesn't really affect too much. Okay. Well, another example of uh, electronic funds transfer taking place in a particular application is where you make use of EFTPOS, which is, which stands for electronic funds transfer at point of sale. That is what EFTPOS stands for. A normal cash till, remember we were talking about this in one of our earlier lectures that the place or the point in a shop 
where you pay for the goods that you have purchased is called a point of sale. It is called a POS. And one that makes use of a, of a, of a computerized system to record sale transactions and everything is called an EFTPUS, sorry, an EPUS, I should say, electronic funds transfer, uh, sorry, EPUS, electronic point of sale where you make use of the barcode system to make for payments. There's a third type which is known as EFTPOS. So I have, I've actually spoken about three of them. One is POS, then you have EPOS, and then you have EFTPOS. POS or point of sale is simply that point or that place in the supermarket where you pay for the goods that you have purchased. It could be a manual setup, Ideally, it is usually a manual setup that is normally called a point of sale. The one that makes use of a computerized system that has, you know, the barcode read in and, and all that attached would be an example of an electronic point of sale where sale transactions are carried out electronically using computer systems and a barcode system is used to, to read the product, product information in, and computerized receipts are produced, uh, you know, related to the sales. There's a third category which is EFTPUS, electronic funds transfer at point of sale. Now, this particular category is where you have the option of making your payments using your debit and your credit cards. Instead of making a payment in the form of hard cash, you can make your payments by making use of a debit or a credit card. With such systems, you would find a card reading machine always attached. So there's no need of making a payment in hard cash. You can make use of, as I said, your debit and your credit card to make the payment. Hence the name EFTPUS, Electronic Funds Transfer at Point of Sale. And in simple words, why is it named like this? Because when you make your payment using a debit card or a credit card, that's an electronic form of making payment. Behind the scenes, what happens? EFT happens or electronic funds transfer happens. Why? Because when you make the payment, whatever amount of money that you have shopped for, you know, whatever it is, whatever your bill is that you have to, you know, pay to the shop, that amount of money will be subtracted from your account and it will be added to the shop's account. When you get the card swiped or in case of a chip and pin, reading mechanism when the card is inserted and the details input the the personal identification number and stuff and the and the account numbers tallied or verified that the the certain amount of money that you've shopped for will be debited from your account and it will be credited credited to the shop's account so another example of electronic funds transfer taking place where one person is making the payment or one party is making the payment and the other party is receiving the payment in their account and no hard cash involved in between. Are you getting this? Okay, let's have a look at the process. Let's quickly go over the process and then I think it will be more clear. Very quickly going through the steps, they're very simple steps. Step number one, Card chip is read and checked to make sure it is in date and it is a valid card number. This is where it all starts from. When you present your card, the first thing that needs to be validated is that the card is still within uh, the date of its use. It is a valid card. If it has reached its expiry date or it has, you know, crossed the expiry date, then the card would be considered invalid. Then you cannot use the card for making any transaction. So the first check that is made on the card is that it is still valid to be used or within the date of validity for it to be used. Next, if not, the card is rejected and transaction terminated. If the card is not valid, of course, then the card should be rejected and the transaction should stop right then and there and it should not be further carried, carried on any further. Yeah? Is that right or not? Okay. Some of you look a bit lost, I don't know why. PIN is entered by customer into the PIN pad. The next thing is ver validating or verifying the customer that the card belongs to the person because uh, how do you 
prove your identity that you are the right person or you are the right card owner by putting in the personal identification number of the card okay, to authorize yourself as a genuine card holder. That is the next step. Step number four, chip reader determines PIN from, uh, from the chip. The chip on the card, the chip on the card already has certain information stored about the card holder. When you enter the PIN at the checkout using the keypad, that PIN is verified with the PIN that is already stored on the chip. If a match is found, only then would, be, would it be authenticated or would it be authenticated that you are a genuine card holder? Yes? How does the PIN get verified, the PIN that you get, that you enter using the keypad at the checkout? Well, it is the same PIN which is stored on the, on the chip of the card and that is how the verification comes in. If the two pins are, you know, the two pins are compared, if they are identical, the transaction is authorized. If they are not identical, error message appears on the chip reader and two more attempts are allowed. This is usually how the process is. If the pins, pins do not match, the pin on the chip and the pin that has been entered by the person at the checkout, okay, for carrying out the transaction, if they don't match, this means that maybe the person is not a genuine card holder. All right. If they don't, you would be given at least two more attempts. As a, as a you know, diagnostic test as well, you cannot be given uh, an unlimited number of attempts to, to keep on you know, trying out combinations and stuff and you know, some combination would work and the transaction could get through. You can only be given maybe two more attempts. If you get your pin wrong in another two more attempts, then the transaction can be permanently blocked for that time. And you may not be allowed to, you know, use your card any further until you again prove your identity to the bank. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. So this is what is done then. Step number eight. If the two pins are still not identical, the transaction is rejected and error message issued. Customer's bank is contacted by supermarket's computer that, well, it is not a genuine card and the transaction cannot be made to go through. Customers bank receives customers record. Customers bank checks if sufficient funds are there in the account. If there are sufficient funds, then transaction is, sorry, if there are insufficient funds, then the transaction is rejected. If there are sufficient funds, then transaction is authorized. Availability of funds is very important. I cannot make a payment that I do not have the money for. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if there are sufficient funds, then transaction is authorized. The amount of the bill is deducted from the customer's account. The amount of bill is credited to the supermarket's account. So, this is what the whole process is. And it is important to know this process in this sequence. The reason is that you may be given a question in the exam where you are asked to explain the process of use of electronic funds transfer at an EFTP OS, okay, when a customer pays for the goods that he has purchased from a shop. What is the process? What happens behind the scenes? So you may be required to produce this, this list in a particular sequence. All right. Now with all these, all these examples, we have seen one thing that the transaction is taking place as and when the activity is happening and the related information is being updated in real time without any delay. Hence, these are all examples of online transaction processing or interactive processing or as it is also called demand processing. At no point in time is there a delay or a wait. As soon as an activity is taking place or a transaction happens, whatever little data that needs to be processed or updated as a result happens right, in, right then and there at that very moment. All right. So this is what online processing is all about. Any question, anyone? Okay.